What is up YouTube? Welcome back guys. Today we're going to do a video on Baldur's Gate 3 and a little class tier list because, you know, why not? This game is new. I've been having so much fun with it. I think it'd be fun for us to talk about it a little bit. So, uh, there is a little bit of, I do want to say there is a little bit of quality drop. Uh, a lot of my equipment has sadly bitten the dust, but I still want to make some videos, so let's get into it. If you guys know me, besides from Pokemon movie beforehand, uh, you might see on older in my channel, I did do a couple D&D stuff. I have been such a huge D&D fan, I've been making characters forever. Basically, as soon as, as, soon as I got into D&D, I make characters all the time. I like to try a bunch of things out. And this game, being D&D, specifically 5 e uh, kind of built on, I feel I felt right at home jumping into this game. And I've, had so, I've been having so much fun with it. So let's go over all the classes and put them in a tier list. So I've got S, A, B, C, and D tier list here. Or, uh, tiers here, and we'll go through uh, alphabetically. So let's start with Barbarian. We'll throw this one A. Their damage is amazing with Reckless Attack and High Strength. To be able to shove people off cliffs in this game is so satisfying. It can be really strong, or you can be really tanky as well if you want to go like path, uh, like the, the Wild Heart path, and take Bear. You can dip into magic a little bit when you're not raging if you want as well with the, I think it's the Wild Magic. Or not wild magic, but whatever this subclass is called. So they have some, some fun flexibility there, but just being a big hunk of meat, running through, cleaving through things, having, you know, not needing to wear armor, say so screw it, going through, dealing big damage, it is so much fun. And rage is just so impressive with, with, the, with the damage you can do. Wielding a big sword or a big axe, it's, it's awesome. Next up is Bard. Bard's going to go in the S tier. The support spells they have are amazing. They can have some really solid offensive spells as well. You can go pretty martial and be really tanky with a higher armor class with the Swords Bard, or you can be more support oriented, more offensively oriented on the magic side with the Bard. They're just so flexible. So much way, so many, so many ways to impact the battle. Uh, I have to put them up in S tier. Next up is the Ranger, and they can also do a lot of good damage. That's like Gloomstalker is really good. You can get a lot of cool skills and proficiencies with this class and be you know good at like scouting out. You can be a great archer, but you can also go martial as well and, and, and get up in the front lines. You have a little bit of magic you can play with, get a couple spells in there to help you out. And it can be really good. Uh, the Paladin is next up. It's going to go up in the S tier. This damage is outrageous and having some more magic to impact your... Your battle outcomes is just so amazing. Uh, the smites, the tankiness, the damage, everything about Paladin is just super amazing. They are so, so, so solid. Cleric, kind of like Bard, is just super flexible. You can run it very offensively orient oriented. You can run it pretty martially with like the War Domain or the Tempest Domain even as well. There's just so many different ways to play the Cleric and they have so many good spells. They are just so such an amazing class. Next up is Druid, and Druid is very similar to these ones as well. A very flexible magic wielding class that can also just decide to be an unkillable tank, wild shaping all the time, once the HP runs out, wild shaping back into like an owl bear, or turning into a badger and, and burrowing under, or turning into a spider and, and, and CCing the opponents, and also having a lot of CC and control spells, or you can go offensive spells, you can go support. Such So much flexibility there with Druids. Really, it's just such an amazing class. The fighter's going to go in A tier as well. Uh, similar to Barbarians, they can just have so much damage. Uh, with all the extra attacks, with battle maneuvers, or easier crit chances as a champion, or you can go Elders Knight and, and buff yourself with, with magic, whether you are tankier, or harder to hit, or you hit harder, or you're more flexible, more support-oriented. Fighter is just so amazing with them. They get so many feats. Which is really fun to play around with and really build a, a kind of a master, a warrior. Monk is also going to go here in A tier. They get a lot. Monk is really, really buffed from just normal D&D. They get a lot of cool items in this game and they can just do a ton of damage. You can also, kind of like a ranger, be very much of a skill monkey. Or you can dive a little a little bit into magic, quote unquote, uh, if you want to take some subclasses like the way of uh, the elements. You can have some kind of spell singing aspects if you want with a monk, or you can just run up unarmed combat. You can use 
defeats like Tavern Brawler just deal a ton, a ton of damage. Really, really solid class. Next up is the Rogue, and with, <laughs> with sticking on the conversation of damage, they are just so strong. Uh, speaking of skill monkeys, they have so many proficiencies. They can lockpick for you. You can sneak attack and do a bunch of damage that way. You can be a little supportive too, and you can go like an arcane trickster or something, or even thief, and do a bunch of kind of things. And have, just have a bunch of different options for bonus actions, and having more bonus actions is moving around the battlefield, positioning really well, or going assassin and just trying to you know start the battle off in your favor and just kind of take someone out really early on. It's a great choice as well. Sorcerer is going to go in S tier. Their meta magic, any of the, any of the subclasses, they're all just so powerful. They, they can have such strong spells. You can deal so much damage. You can have so much crowd control or so much impact on the battlefield with your magic. It is just so incredible. Same with Warlock. They can do a lot of damage as well. They can flex a little bit more martially focused if you want. Uh, things like the hex pack to the pack to the blade hex blade builds. And they are a little bit more damage and offense oriented, but they still have some pretty cool like debuff abilities and crowd control abilities. It's just such such an incredible class. And then lastly, the wizard with all of the different magic schools, you can just you can build so flexibly, and you can be this supportive tank or support you know trying to stop your allies from taking damage with adjuration. You can do transmutation, give your allies some more buffs, enchantment divination or you can go evocation if you want to just drop big nukes nukes on the battlefield without hurting your friends it is just so amazing and so this is going to conclude the tier list and you might be wondering what the hell is going on here here's the real truth about it magic martial magic in this game and pretty much just in dnd is stronger than the Marshall, but Marshall is definitely not weak. And I see so many, I see so many tier lists just talking about like, oh, the Ranger is bad, or the Druid is bad, or or Warlock is better than Sorcerer. And honestly, none of that matters. Even in Tactician, don't get difficulty. None of that matters, unless you really want to take like super five points, builds, and and all of this different like. Try hard stuff as much as I want to say it, and I'm a try hard. I am one of those people. I'm just gonna tell you this: play what you think is fun. You can make an amazing build off of anything. I have druid builds that are making the that could just solo encounters. I have cleric builds that solo encounters. I have a ranger that can just take out anybody he wants. I have a wizard that can do so many amazing things. Like every character can just every class, every character, every everything can do so many amazing things in this game. Play what's fun. But I can't tell you. Play what's fun. Everything can be amazing. But I will say, magic is better. Magic just is better. So if you if you are looking for like a quote unquote meta game thing, you're like, oh, I must find out what is the most po powerful thing. Magic is probably more powerful than these things, but also, I mean, a fighter having three attacks and battle maneuvers, and a barbarian getting advantage with their reckless attack and frenzy rage, or the the totem animals, or the monk hitting a million times, or the ranger having you know familiars, or a little animal helper, and then also dealing a lot of damage that way. Like, there's just, there's a million things. Don't worry about C, D, S, A. Like, don't worry about this stuff. <laughs> if you know a class is good, then the class is good. It's it's so, as simple as that. Like, most tier lists you see, it's going to be something along the lines of, like, oh, Paladin's going to be really, like, Paladin's amazing, uh, Cleric's amazing, Druid's not that good, Ranger's not that good, Monk is hit or miss, depending on who you talk to, uh, Rogue, someone like here, Barbarian's amazing, but Fighter is, is better. And the warlock is not as good as the sorcerer. Who cares, man? Just who cares? Just play the game with whatever class you think is really cool, and you know, think about your build. Have a center focus on what you want to do. Do you want to CC? Do you want to do damage? 
Do you want to be a, a huge support? Do you want to do damage from range? Do you want to do damage from up close? Do you want to focus on fire spells? Do you want to be an archer? Do you want to be very flexible? Like, who? Just figure, figure out what you want to do and what you have fun doing and build that way. This game has just so much for you. So many items, so many builds, and since all the classes are front-loaded, you know, going to level 12, you still get so much from a class, and you can multi-class if you know what you're doing. For that, I would just say, you know, kind of do the research, figure, think of what you want to be doing, and then think of a multi-class that could maybe help you do what you want to do, and, you know, justify it that way. You can look up some guides, and maybe I could do some multi-classing guides in the future, but for our class tier list, this is just my honest and truest opinion that I can give you, is this. Just magic, martial, which ranger, ranger and monk kind of have magic too, and like, fighter, all these classes can dip into magic if, you, if they want. Play what's fun, everything can be amazing. But magic, I would say, is just better though. Like, I, I really will just say, like, magic is stronger, quote-unquote, than, than martial combat is. Mainly because distance is safer, <laughs> uses less, if you don't get hit, you use less resources, and big AoE stuff, and, and just turning it, something into a sheep and pushing it off a cliff is pretty amazing, and just gust, blowing a gust of wind, and yeah. I keep, I can, I can say a million examples for everything, and that's the beauty of this game, that's the beauty of Dungeons and Dragons. So play what is fun. And that's my thoughts on a class tier list. From a metagamer and a tryhard. <laughs> I really am. I really am one of these people. You know, I, I I stop and reclass my characters all the time to get the best to get the to get the most out of them from what I want. And then I do all this research and all this stuff. So I am one of those metagamers, just like you. Or maybe you're not. But just listen to me when I say, just play what you think is fun. Use the companions that you enjoy having and just think of what you want to do with them. That's all you gotta do. Just think of what you want to do and try to centralize a build. That's all you gotta worry about. Anyways, thanks for tuning in, guys. Love y'all. Peace.